Well, hey Leute, äh, Silly Gurke ist wieder am Start hier auf dem gratis erreichbaren Minecraft Server Laser Gurkenland. Dies ist eine Dauerwerbesendung. Wir bewerben hier diesen Server mit der IP sillyhuhn.com und heute schauen wir den Talk Aaron Jones Introduction to Freenet auch von dem Channel Brian Clough. Ähm, wenn ihr die ersten 57 Minuten und 34 Sekunden verpasst habt, dann schaut euch die letzte Folge, was war das? Folge 37, 36, die Folge davor halt, die auch Introduction to Freenet heißt. Hm. Minecraft-Server, auf dem wir spielen, hat die IP-Adresse 149.202.127.134 Alternativ ähm, auch erreichbar unter sillyhuhn.com Alles klar, dann pumpen wir jetzt weiter den Talk Aaron Jones Introduction to Freenet bei Minute 57 Sekunden 34 So you're going to have an incident so grand and so destructive that it's going to either propel us into the next world war or it's going to cause endless amounts of destruction, okay? And there's just an expectation that eventually it's going to happen. Somebody's going to figure out a way of bringing down every DNS server in the whole internet. Somebody's going to figure out a way of causing some kind of harm or attack that's going to end with essentially the entire planet not having internet access for any amount of time. Okay? And we've seen sort of tests of that. Uh, if you get on the internet and you start looking at uh, early 2000, late 90s internet attacks in South America, there are certain Ooh. countries where European nations actually broke in to a certain country down in South America and figure out a way of making all of their telecommunications go blank for what amounted to almost 24 hours. This is echt effektive okay. Kriegsführung auch, so ne? den Leuten das Internet abzu abzudrehen. <lacht> da gab es auch, auch mal dieses eine Ding bei den äh, transatlantischen äh, Leitungen, die da irgendwo unten liegen, wenn man da kurz mit dem U-Boot runtertaucht, äh, da kann man auch viel kaputt machen, internettechnisch, habe ich mal gehört. Ich weiß es ist sehr detailliert, wie ich das gerade beschreibe, aber wollte ich nur mal kurz anmerken, dass ich irgendwas weiß. Thank you. 
get medical into certain areas. There's a lot going on there. And so the U.S. decided to do a called SOP. I got links to it for anybody who wants to be able to look at this stuff. Epic Food is still in a court case about this, trying to uh, Epic being the Electronic Privacy Information Center, not Epic, uh, not the Court of Appeal, that kind of thing. Different, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a SOP unique anomaly for Epic. Down, epic. Bare minimum. Here's what it does We can turn <coughs> off the internet, we can turn off telecommunications, we can turn off anything that we need to within the United States to prevent a situation. Ich mache mal irgendwo so eine Kiste, wo wertvolle Tools kommen, die dann später mitnehmen kann. Die jetzt nicht mehr in den Tagen liegen sollten. Ah, das geht nicht mehr. How do you communicate so that's weird. without the internet? Um, that's kind of a problem because their expectation is, is that well we'll just switch off the internet for everybody except for a handful of people over here who might need it. But I don't know about you, but I'm not registered with the SOP 303 list, and I'm not sure how I would communicate with them in the event that mm -hmm. they switched off the internet and yeah, wanted to register. Well, actually, I. Servus, moin. Hä, hey, Leute, mal kurzer Dings hier, Side Note. Ich habe das Gefühl, seit äh, man sich umnennen kann in Minecraft, gibt es so viel äh, das sind meine Koordinaten. Äh, <lacht> ja gut, äh, habe ich gesagt, habe ich meine Koordinaten gerade öffentlich geleakt. Äh, naja, ich meine, seit, ähm, ihr wisst schon, seit, 
<lacht> seit man seinen Namen ändern kann, sind die so viel... Wie, 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 heißt das wie heißt dieser Prozess? Besser? Also weniger mit Nummern, ja? Also weniger... Ich meine, bevor, bevor jeder seinen Namen ändern konnte, ich meine, ich hieß... Ich will jetzt nicht meinen Namen liegen, wie ich davor hieß, okay? Aber ich hatte Nummern drinnen. Ähm und jetzt nicht mehr. Und sowas wie Moin, Servus, Moin, das ist auch... Da könnte man denken, dass der schon taken war, aber war er wohl nicht. Und ich glaube, der hat sich nicht als Moin, Servus, Moin registriert. Und, ähm... Oh, vielleicht... Ja. Okay, weiter geht's mit dem Talk. Internet oder anything like that, that's fairly pinpoint accurate. So, they've built a pretty good system for SOP 303 already. This isn't a flip off the internet and we accidentally shut down all of California. This is a, I need this grid turned off. Okay, Leute, das geht so nicht. Ähm ich, wieso, wenn ich Take Screenshot auf V binde, wieso geht es dann im Chat los? Minecraft, lo Jesus, was ist mit den Leuten? Ich habe so, ich habe so die Hoffnung in dieses Spiel verloren. Boah. Okay, Leute, ich habe schon wieder. Sorry, letztes Mal. war das? Hawaii oder so? Wo zwei Stunden Bombendrohung war, weil irgendwer den falschen Knopf gedrückt hat? Jesus, wenn jemand aus Versehen das Internet ausschaltet. Uh, she hit the fiber optic lane line to the entire 
entire country of Georgia. So they went down. The internet was down for several hours because she destroyed their method of getting out of the country. Okay? So the entire place went down. That was an accident. She didn't do it on purpose. 75 year old lady just cruising around trying to find a way to feed her family, and she blows out the entire country of Georgia. It's not impossible for us to have a situation where somebody knocks out the internet just by accident. Uh, in addition to that, I give you all a link to the Telecommunications Act. Oops. So, there, it's already started, guys. It's over. Everybody go home. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> uh, Assignment of National Security and Emergency Preparedness Communications Functions. They have already created all of the documentation and everything necessary to Jesus. make a decision on how the internet is going to be handled. When it will be turned off, we have standard operating procedures, we have all of this stuff. It's just kind of in a haze because we don't have access to the whole thing. We know it's there, we know it's in use, we know that it has been used, and we have seen the effects of it, but we don't know the whole story. We don't know what tools are used, we don't know who is in of it, or the decision-making process on when it can and cannot be deployed. Uh, this is a really good breakdown. Now, I'm going to tell you what I've told everybody already before. Here's your news article. We know the name of this thing. Now, go out and actually find it and read the real thing. This is an interpretation. Don't allow other people to just interpret your data, okay? That's kind of what we've become as a society is we become this society where somebody else sits down and interprets everything and then hands it off to you and tells you, well, this is what you need to think about it. Ja, aber so, so sind wir konzipiert als, als Menschheit. So sind wir so weit gekommen. Niemand hat die Zeit und die Kraft, alles bis auf, bis auf den Grund zu verstehen. Dadurch in gewisser Weise ist Naivität und Abgabe von Aufgaben und auch von Interpretation ein wichtiger Bestandteil von, von Fortschritt. Leute entwickeln irgendwelche Basics und andere bauen darauf auf. Und diese Sachen, die darauf aufgebaut wurden, wären niemals entstanden, wenn die Leute, die darauf aufgebaut hätten, ihr ganzes Leben damit verbracht hätten, die Basics zu verstehen. Das ist irgendwo, ich weiß nicht, klar, es ist ein schöner Gedanke, in dem man sagt, ja, wir sollten alle von Grund auf alles verstehen und alles hinterfragen und alles durcharbeiten, aber es ist halt einfach unrealistisch, weil wir nur so und so viel Zeit haben, um Sachen zu machen, weil es einfach, weil wir uns zusammentun können und andere uns so Zeit sparen können. Also, ja, schwierige Sache, klar, also irgendwie, ja. Ja, aber alles ist important. Go read your documentation. If you go through some of my older talks, particularly the last one and some of them before, I show you how to gain access to the courts. I show you how to gain access to these documents. All of that stuff is here. We're learning that here, okay? Use it. So now let's move to the next stuff. This is more traditional. This is the stuff that the people at Freenet are going to need to worry about a little bit more than the shutting down the internet. If we get to the point where the internet shuts down, then we're probably going to be more towards the point of Bosnia. And if you're not familiar with Bosnia, go home and read about the Bosnian war. Okay? They literally went from the night before having dinner, sitting around, playing games, and having a good time, to the very next day, guys who had never picked up a rifle before were hefting RPGs and blowing up buildings. Like, it overnight, the place disintegrated. And there are some terrible but very interesting stories from the Bosnian War. Denial of service. You can attempt to fill the network with junk data. We can, if when you're setting this up, it will literally ask you, the maximum amount of space that you can provide to a free net installation is about 50 meters. Okay? It's not a lot. You're not, you're not going to be doing a whole bunch with a whole lot of resources. This is very resource in, in instances. 
don't need to build huge systems with multi cores and you know terabytes of hard drive space. You can go with something as small as 20 gigabytes of hard drive space. You can take it off to the side. However, people potentially could upload junk data and then begin the process of making many requests for that data. Now, this is resource intensive. This is something that a state actor would be able to accomplish. Us, right now, probably not going to be able to accomplish this kind of a task. What they're looking to do is drive down the corner here, of the to network ask. in order to force an exodus of users. You want to get people to stop using the tool, make it so slow that they can't use it. That's what they're looking for, okay? That's the attack. In reality, that attack is not such a big deal right now, simply because most people cannot wield the amount of power necessary to knock this network down. If you start pushing data up to the network, well, guess what? You've connected another computer to the network. There's data being transferred around. It's all peer-to-peer. -peer. It's generally resilient against this kind of attack. Now, the next one's pretty important, because what we're going to get to is eventually some court cases. Monitoring. You're going to produce traffic with specific signatures. I don't want core traffic. I don't want I2P, Nutella. I don't, I don't use our torrent for home. I don't even have that stuff installed on a system at my house. Everything remote. Because you don't want the traffic within your network at home. You don't want it to be shown on your thing. You don't want to be the guy who has a copy of Linux Journal and now you're on the NSA watch list, okay? You install Freenet, you pop open HTOP, I already went over it, search for the word Freenet, you're gonna find it. People can look for this stuff. In addition to that, they can look for specific traffic behavior local to your network and figure out what you're doing at your home. Um, I'm gonna jump further down just real quick. This is have the risk of court cases in here that are discussed where officers literally say, look, we knew they were using Freenet. We were suspicious that they were using it for wrong. We went to their home and performed a knock and talk. Knock on the door and ask, hey, you using Freenet? What's going on? Just get them to talk to you. And essentially they said people who use Freenet are too smart and they refuse to talk to them. So they know what the traffic is. They can see it. They, even if it's encrypted, you can still tell what's going on. If you're using a VPN, it's very easy to figure it out. Even though the traffic might be encrypted, but you can see that you're using a VPN. Next one is another denial of service attack. Uh, you can block all the seed nodes. So if you're using this out of darknet mode, it's called normal mode. You run it in normal mode and you block all of the seed nodes. If potentially anybody who tries to connect to Freenet is going to be unable to do so, because essentially they just won't get the network data. This is a popular method of attacking uh, Freenet within like China. Try to use Freenet in China, they block all the seed nodes, you don't have any friends to kind of hook up with, you're never able to connect to the network. Uh, mm. In addition to that, you can poison the seed nodes with bad information, like a public key. And once you've given them a hostile public key, then you could potentially surround the node, and then you're going to be able to guess what data is stored on the box or manipulate the box to download certain data. Threat's kind of low, okay? Again, state actor level. You do something to make Uncle Sam mad, maybe this is gonna be a tool that's used. But a guy in your neighborhood who's war driving finds out your network security sucks, on your wireless and starts poking around, this is probably not what you're going to run into. And then your privacy threat. I have a bunch up here. And again, most of this stuff is Tor. Because remember, on your Freenet stuff, you have a much lower likelihood of running into a situation where people are doing dumb stuff with Freenet than they are with Tor. Potential, particularly because yeah, you this can is make money on done. Tor. Freenet really can't make any money okay, you know. stuff. So the first site is Darkode. Uh, Krebs on Security did a talk on it. Essentially, they relied on Tor. They were super paranoid. They moved the site around all the time. You had to get invited. You had to know somebody. They were very careful about getting, letting people in. Somebody
somebody hooked up Brian Krebs, got him onto the site, he started pulling data from it, and eventually they tricked him into reporting on something, uh, like a honeypot kind of thing. They gave him some fake info, he reported on it, they figured out who his account was, they canceled his account. Well, lo and behold, they still got busted by the FBI, got taken down. Okay, a bunch of it rest executed. They were selling all kinds of data on dark code. They were passing out all sorts of stuff. I mean, it was a, it was a really bad site filled with really bad information, and it still got taken down, even though these guys were very good with Tor and very, very paranoid, okay? <coughs> Playpen, child pornography. This site goes up. It lasts for a little bit of time, and then the FBI takes over and starts using it as a honeypot. Now, we've talked about this before. We've talked about the concept of um, what's known as... Uh, Entrapment. No, 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 no. That, that, that's a question as well, but uh, there's a, a concept called re-victimization. So they're running this site where people were victimized, and then they take it over, and they're still having to release this data, essentially. So those victims are being ah, victimized. They have no they auch schon in Tor -talk geredet, um, ne? I disagree with that. I don't think that you should do something like that. Now, they made a different call. Uh, hey, laufe ich überhaupt in die richtige Richtung? Oder uh, like that. So, who am I to say, right? I'm the guy who works here. Uh, But Playpen got picked up by the FBI. The world's largest child pornography webpage, Child Play, was run by the Australian law enforcement. And I got links to every single one of these items. So, they, essentially, somebody set this up, began the process of drawing people in to use the product, and then got caught by law enforcement, and the law enforcement took over and started using it to bust those people. Again, going back to re-victimization. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know. This is a this is above my pay grade kind of decision making going on here, but I want you all to see that's what's going on. Then we get to the Black Ice Project. Again, for those of you who are concerned about like PDFs and things like that, uh, I mark them PDF. So you want to throw open a VM and pull down that PDF to interact with it or anything like that, go right ahead. But the Black Ice Project was run by ICAC, Internet Crimes Against Children, okay? Now, they made a claim that Freenet users could be compromised using a convoluted method to reveal the system to lost, store Leute. specific data. Uh, the Freenet Project refuted the 920, this is not true. 6, the mathematics used within their documentation are not correct and cannot be used. And in addition to that, here is the source code. And I might be able to pull this up. Oh, I don't know. So this section Boah, wenn ich jetzt hier sterbe. Oh, I lost area yeah, here is. is literally the code that was designed and implemented specifically to mitigate the vulnerability that is claimed within the Black Ice Project. Okay, again, why did I tell you all to read the source code? Because guess what? There you go. Hey, we found a vulnerability and this is how we mitigated it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I looked at the math and I talked to these people on IRC and this is still a little bit above my head. Like, I would not be able to come in as a subject matter expert on the mathematics used for dealing with this against their argument right now. I still need more time to familiarize myself with this, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch back because I see some of you looking. No, oh, that's like an argument, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, I think it's important to read their actual statement here. Well, this is alarming. Their entire grounds for probable cause are based on an outright lie. Freenet's probabilistic decrement does not work at all in the fashion described in that paper which is largely copy and paste from other documents, including Wikipedia. Five minutes of studying the source code would have led them to discover this. Four years of investigating, and all that they've come up with is, hey, we're stumped, so let's just lie to the courts about this and hope that no one catches on. Now, this did end up with them arresting people. They actually arrested a whole bunch of people at a in the North, uh, University of North Dakota. So you can actually look up the Black Ice Project on Google, and then you will be able to see a bunch of arrests that were involved in this. And I'm going to tell you right now, for the Freenet people, this is probably not a hill to die on. 
you don't want to get up and base your entire claim on essentially a case that was proven and the guy admitted to doing. But oh, it's been so bad. in addition to that, I mean, in the defense of their project, mathematically speaking, and with being able to show the source code, that the was the same. vulnerability that was claimed is also claimed as mitigated. So, Warte, war ich hier schon mal? is there a legal content? Let's start moving towards the content because it's important because we're talking about this now. Is there a legal content on Freenet? Yes, undoubtedly there is. There's illegal content on the Freenet. There's illegal content on Tor. There's illegal content on I2P. There is illegal content on pretty much every kind of system in the entire world. But under Freenet, it is considered much rarer. And in addition to that, even the Black Ice Project within their documentation, if you read it, states Freenet is pretty hostile to people who want to use that system for illegal activity. They're not real. Nice okay, here is this niche. Oh. Uh, there is a lack of server side processing, databases, and the ability to use the tools available to turn a profit. So these are all major turnoffs to those individuals attempting to conduct a lucid business. You're going to be more likely to find ramblings, rantings, complaints. I saw an entire web page dedicated to somebody who was essentially complaining about like waitresses and waiters that they dealt with. They had a free net site that you could go to and they would be like, I ate at Burger King today and man, so and so at Burger King really sucks. And that was their site. Uh, now, we're going to do a comparison against Tor. The Tor browser is essentially Firefox, right? And the Tor Jesus, browser serves up buggy. everything. What's a huge vulnerability for the Tor browser? Two What, items. Isn't fucking able back? to name the two items that are super massive oh. vulnerabilities for the encryption. What's that? Exit nodes in, with uh, clear traffic? No, just for the browser. Oh. Uh, JavaScript or CDNs. So the, the method of serving up that JavaScript and then Flash. And guess what? You still have to mitigate that. You open up the Tor browser, and you're going to have to go in and slide, move things, and set stuff up, and you're going to have to do all of this to get that thing set up to stop JavaScript, to stop Flash, to stop all of that. Now, I, again, I use the word claims. Freenet claims to strip JavaScript, Flash, and other attack methods to fight. Now, they disagreed with my word claim. They said that we do. We don't use a uh, we don't use a system of being permissive. Essentially, what Freenet system does is you feed it a web page that you want to serve out to the world. It's going to look at it and it's going to essentially only serve up things that it knows are safe. If it's not safe or it doesn't recognize it as safe, it will not serve it. JavaScript doesn't come through. Most CSS doesn't come through. You can't push CDNs over Freenet pages. There's a whole bunch of mitigation that's done on the Freenet side as opposed to on the browser side that you would be doing on Tor. So on Tor, you're responsible for more work to be done to defend yourself. Under Freenet, essentially, they're giving you a much reduced footprint on the internet, but they're stripping out anything like Flash, JavaScript, so on and so forth. Make sense? Everybody follow? Okay. <coughs> uh, I use the word claim because Sometimes software updates, right? And potentially you can attack the, um, you can attack, if you know that the server's there, you can attack their connection to their upload, or their uh, update servers, and you can try to inject your version in between. Uh, you can attack the source code that's used for building the object. I mean, there's, there's a ton of ways to try to mitigate their ability that. So if you're not checking for it, you're not paying attention, and you get an update, potentially you could get a version of Freenet that does not strip out JavaScript or injects JavaScript. What are we seeing right now? We're seeing Bitcoin mining and Monero mining and all of the cryptocurrency mining being pushed out off of CDN. People included JavaScript that came from a source that apparently they could trust And we've got 4,000 U.S. government web pages right now that if you go to them, some criminal is earning money off of crypto mining in your browser as you go to that government web page right now. Okay? So you don't want them to be able to push something to your, your stuff for 
for those of you who are not familiar with JavaScript, the act of being able to run code through somebody's browser is a lot more dangerous than just crypto mining. You can do some terrible things to people once you have that kind of access, okay? So what about that content? Well, is there content? Yeah. You know what I listen to? A really good radio drama. Like the horse with the clapping. Like that. Somebody made that and wanted to be able to distribute it. And so they made their own radio drama. And I sat down and I pulled it down and I listened to it. And it was really good. And it was made by like some guy and his girlfriend is what it sounded like. And they did different voices and things like that. You could probably do the exact same thing on YouTube. And there would be no reason yeah, not to. Yeah, boy, endlich. There was nothing in it that needed to be private, nothing scary, nothing odd. It was just somebody telling a story. But they wanted to do it on Freenet. They were contributing content. Simple blogs. People put all kinds of stuff on there. On your very first page, whenever you load up Freenet for the very first time, and once you've got it up and running, they have blogs on all of the developers.
distribute information and also has a suite of free software used for publishing available. Did I mention that as you install Freenet, everything that you need to be able to push content to Freenet or build web pages on Freenet, all of that is included. So as you're reading the documentation and looking through the plugins, there's literally tons and tons of stuff that they include as part of it to allow you to still add content to the system. It's all there for you, okay? One-stop shop. You come in to the Freenet network and they give everything that you need to be able to work with it. So why does privacy matter? Well, it matters because it works as a limit on the power that others can exert on us. Personal data is valuable and can affect our reputations as well as be used to shape our behavior. Personal data can cause great harm. That's important. Walk away with that. Freenet functions by allowing users to anonymously share files, browse and publish free sites, and distribute information in a manner that provides protection against censorship. Not perfect protection, but protection. There is a level of protection here. And Freenet works as identical nodes that pool their stored resources in a censorship resistant manner. Now, what about Tor? Tor is reliant on many different pieces of software and provides access to the ClearNet out into the world to Tor exit nodes, right? While also being a little bit more centralized. Freenet is more decentralized, provides in house replacement tools for ClearNet behaviors, and hosts content in a decentralized way in order to reduce the effectiveness of traditional DDoS attacks. So, what is it? It's more robust. Freenet is more robust, it's safer, it provides a little bit more privacy, and it gives you tools in house instead of you having to try to develop a method to deploy a copy of Nginx as a Tor service while also managing all the other aspects of it, and then in addition to that, understanding how the browser interacts with it. So if you're building a web page and you decide in a traditional manner to add a CDN, as was mentioned, or to push JavaScript from an untrusted source, well, guess what? All the users who are coming to your site and attempting to use it, potentially you're burning those Freenet is much more robust and protective against that kind of behavior. So let's get to the conclusion. Where are we really at? We gotta worry about our privacy. We gotta worry about being anonymous. But we also still need to worry about our authorship. Sometimes you need people to know who you are. Sometimes you need them to not know who you are. But these are all concepts that we have to not only focus on, but we have to juggle them. We have to make decisions every single day on where we are. In addition to that, we have a lot of threats. There are threats externally, there are people trying to break into other companies and our data. There is nothing that we could have done barring preventing them from gathering that data to prevent somebody like Equifax from essentially placing all of us at risk. Our companies bought into it. Our employers bought into it. Everybody bought into the idea of having the credit score and so on and so forth and all of these things that we did Everybody got a golden parachute but us, okay? There are corporate, government, and private interests who are each working to end our right to be anonymous as well as to chill discourse and discussion. Information has become valuable to the point that many companies now subsist on the gathering of this data as well as dissemination of it in whole. All they do is work off of your data. It's your life, your pictures, what you do every day, where you go, all of your GPS coordinates, tracking of your phone, making sure that they know what you're doing at all times. That's how they make their money. But it is you who provides that data. So what are you going to do? It is your duty to contribute to the defense of the internet and the right to privacy. We have to take a stand by employing tools that allow us to participate in civic discourse without fear of a handy, heavy-handed response. You deserve the right to hold an unpopular opinion, to ask questions, and to learn. And no single group should hold a monopoly over discussion. Has anybody ever heard the saying, um, I may not agree with what you have to say, but I'll defend your right to say it to the desk? Confucius, yeah. 5,000 sure. years ago. So I come from that, that era slash background slash whatever. You have the right to learn things. You have the right to be wrong and to make a mistake. You have these rights and it should be okay for you to experiment with those things. So you can build a future of communication and ensure that we have the right to talk to each other and that people don't have the right to take away our discussion by being an advocate for free speech, providing the tools 
necessary <laughs> to have an anonymous network and to have open and civil discourse. And we should not allow any of our differences to become a muzzle because we must contribute to the health and welfare of the internet in order to reduce the chance that we will one day discover ourselves unable to do it. Don't allow the internet to become the Facebook machine. You need to develop your skills so you can ensure a future for the internet. So what are my final recommendations? Everybody should know these ones. Get yourself a PGP key. Even if it's just using Keybase, that's okay. Jump on Keybase. Start learning how to use it. Understand the concept, and then you can go full command line interface like we all love to do. But start with Keybase and start registering things. Use Linux. We talked about it at the very beginning of the class, but you have this operating system sitting over here that is literally looking for ways to poke holes in your network to gain access to send telemetry data about what you're doing. Or you can use Linux. Now, mind you, Ubuntu in uh, <coughs> their latest 18 release is going to have a opt-out only method of gathering your data and doing something very similar with telemetry. You should look that up. And you should be made aware that there are versions of Linux that are safer and more free than others, okay? Contribute to a privacy enhancing project. Hey, wo bin ich denn jetzt rausgekommen? But you can pick one. It doesn't matter. Find something that you like, find a tool that you're going to use, and start doing something. Use GitHub. Hey, contribute to this. There's some misspelled stuff in here. Jump on GitHub. Pull a pull request. Start learning how to use these tools. We also need to develop relationships and build your own dark net. I can't tell you thank you enough for being here. For your willingness to come here and sit here on a Thursday night and learn about this stuff. Hey, ich bin so lost, Leute. Wo, was? Everybody inside of this room right now cares about their privacy. They care about these tools. They probably care about Linux, or they wouldn't be here. They're all here for the exact same reason you are. So if you're interested in building your own darknet, hey, guess what? We're all here. Network in the real world. And of course, one more time, can't. Mention enough, contribute to open source projects. Uh, as well, for all of you, I've dropped some more PDFs down here at the bottom in the continued reading. Uh, these are uh, educational papers and some uh, paperwork that is written by one of the a gentleman who is working on his PhD as well in here. So if you want to kind of learn about how to attack peer to peer networks, what kind of vulnerabilities they suffer from, and in addition to that, getting a better understanding of Freenet on a whole, documentation, lots of stuff to do. Uh, we're getting close, so we got about 10 minutes. I'll open up for any questions. Anybody want to make questions or comments? Do you know what version of Java 3 it runs on? It will work with OpenJDK. I'm using OpenJDK right now. <coughs> Just whatever is provided by uh, Ubuntu Server 16.04. So, I mean, whatever that version is right now, I know it works, but I'm sure that you could experiment with trying to. Ja, aber hier, schau mal, er weiß nicht mal, welche Java-Version er verwendet und dann sagt er uns, er, man sollte jeden Source-Code analysieren, selber alles verstehen oder zumindest mal durchlesen, mit den Leuten nochmal IRC reden. Jeden Artikel, den man liest, sollte man zurückverfolgen bis zu seiner ursprünglichen Quelle, äh, um dann sich selber ein Bild zu machen. Und dann weiß er nicht mal, welche Java-Version er hat, geschweige denn, welche Sicherheitslücken die hat. Und dann ist es egal, wie sicher Freenet ist, wenn seine Java-Version am, am Sack ist und darüber jemand reinkommt. Ja, Leute, da seht ihr es. Man kann nicht alles wissen. An, an irgendeiner Stelle muss man einfach auf sein Ubuntu-Repository vertrauen, dass die das up-to-date genug machen. Ja, schwierig. Schwierige Sache. Black Ice Project, sure. Uh, assuming that their claim is right, that they mitigated that vulnerability or, or patched it beforehand, does that mean that the whole Black Ice project is a case of parallel construction? You know, and it's funny that you would bring that up because I made that question as well to the people that I was speaking to about it. I don't know. I can't tell you and I'm not part of it, but um, when you read, so when you read the documentation on one of the individuals who was arrested, he was a police officer who worked for... What? Fortune of the... 
in uh, North Dakota. Was ist das? What ended up happening was somebody walked in. Ah, vielleicht der Flint. It was unlocked. They grabbed his laptop and left. Now, within the warrant that was gained, it said that they were able to figure out that he was trading in illicit images by his use of Freenet. And they referenced those, that line of code for that. Now, for them to know that it was on his laptop, and the fact of the matter is, is that they arrested several other people at the exact same university, uh, I don't know. Good question, though. Very, very good question. Anybody else? In five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can, you have my signal. 
throw it on you. If you don't. Ich feiere den Dude, ehrlich gesagt, ich feiere den Dude. Okay, ähm, Leute, ihr wisst Bescheid, Video ist vorbei, wir sind hier auf äh, sillyhuhn.com. 
dem gratis erreichbaren Minecraft Server Laser Group nennt. Wir haben gerade den Talkpunkt Aaron Jones Introduction to Freenet auf dem Channel ähm, Brian Clough. Alternativ gibt es natürlich die IP-Adresse 149.127.124. Ähm Und ja, das war's von mir für diese Episode. Wir sehen uns beim nächsten Mal.